Yo, what's good YouTube, it's Boardsy, and this is going to be an honest review of the Glorious Model I, Glorious's newest mouse, and uh, an interesting mouse, it is hard to deny that. It is actually doing something different with four side buttons and still at a light weight. Because that's the thing, even if you don't like the idea of this mouse, you're going to skip out on the release. There are not many, if any, mice with more than two side buttons under 75 grams besides this mouse. So now there is an option in that market. I don't think that the design of this mouse is anything um, excellent. There are definitely flaws with these uh, removable buttons, which I'll get into later. Never mind. I was going to give some more general info, but I just can't talk about anything besides this side button design. So you see, most mice will normally have two buttons on the side, but Glorious, they just take that and then add a third one in just the most ungodly place. I'm telling you, you are not going to be able, let's say you play Fortnite, you, you envision yourself using these as three build binds. It's not going to work, man. Uh, what I had to do, I just straight up removed this back side button. No, 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 come on. Yeah, I was about to say, can't be camera shy on the removal. And I just played with the mouse like this, with two side buttons and then the sniper button. I'm sure people are going to be like, oh, you definitely could use the third side button. And the problem is just you cannot differentiate between these three side buttons because basically you're going to be able to hit a side button with the tip of your thumb or with like the side joint. And the side joint is not going to be able to accurately differentiate between the back button and the middle button while you're in game. If you don't believe me, fucking waste your money on the mouse and find out for yourself. Not to mention, in general, this is just a super crammed design. Look at how I naturally grip it. My thumb is touching literally every button on the left side of this mouse. I don't know what they could really do to fix that, but it's just a super jammed design. So I was preferring the mouse without the backside button in at all. The sniper button, I don't even have this bound to anything. So I've legit just been using this mouse like it's a standard two side button ergo mouse. So um, it definitely was not made for me. Maybe you could pull off the three buttons if you have like less important binds that you don't need to hit at the same time. But that's enough about the button configuration. I mainly just wanted to warn Fortnite players that you're not going to be able to use all four of these buttons at once while aiming. Best case scenario, you'll be able to use three with the two side buttons and then the sniper button as a build bind or something. But with what I would consider three working side buttons, that doesn't really separate the Model I from the G502 or the Razer Basilisk that much, um, even though it definitely is a better third side button than the Razer Basilisk. Yeah, fuck that thing. But the G502, it has three side buttons. It also has two buttons on the main click and actual like scroll wheel functionality. So there's a lot more feature-wise on the G502, but there's also a lot more weight. So the Model I, they claim it weighs 69 grams. It does not weigh 69 grams. They say there's like two grams of variance or something. It weighed in at 73, 74 grams on my scale with a bit of cable. Um, I just find it annoying that they're like, haha, 69 grams, so quirky, just like on every mouse when it doesn't even weigh that much. Um, yeah, that probably just annoys me more than most people. Something with this mouse is it is somewhat catered towards the left. You won't notice it unless you're looking for it, but I did notice that, that the weight is distributed towards the left. It does make sense with all of the buttons and shit, um, but it's not something you really notice when you're like gripping the mouse, applying pressure in game. The weight balancing does feel fine. The mouse doesn't exactly feel light in the mid 70s weight range, but um, it's not a brick by any means. Next thing to talk about is the general build quality because this is a glorious mouse. So that has to be at the top of the list of questions and concerns. How's the quality? And I will say in terms of um, side flex creaking, there is like some mild creaking. I don't know if the camera, the camera, I don't know if the mic picks it up. Um, but yeah, just a bit of creaking when I squeeze the sides. When I first like get my grip solidified, there's a slight creak. It's nothing that I would consider detrimental to the overall experience though. Um, the one issue I had that I can't seem to replicate is a sticky right click. The first night I used this mouse, it would get stuck a lot. But it seems like, I don't know, some, one time it got unstuck and never got stuck again. So um, all good in my books, I guess. Another complaint that isn't really about the quality of the product is just how hard it is to remove the sniper button. I had this idea that they should sell the glorious prying tool, just like a little plastic pick 
for $20 or something. So you can easily remove it uh, because there are multiple options. I didn't even want to go into these. You can just change the profile of the button. You'll get the mouse and see for yourself. You can make the button go away. You can put on a lower profile option or the high profile one. I'm sure some YouTuber with insane production value has like done some B-roll with this shit. I I'm not going to bother explaining it, but yeah, you can bake make both the side button and this third side button flush with the mouse if you so desire. But yeah, the complaint was with just the buttons being hard to remove. But I think every review has shared that same complaint. So hopefully if they ever do make a wireless version of this mouse, they will address that. Um, I haven't even talked about that yet. This mouse is only available in wired version. I will say though, the Glorious Ascended cable, it's not bad at all for a cable. Like I'm not gonna lie to you. There is not a single time where I felt like hindered by the cable. And I honestly did forget it was there when it was in a bungee for the most part. It could be slightly more flexible, but I'm not like really complaining at all. And at $60 for a wired mouse with these features being sort of in a class of its own compared to its competition in terms of weight. Wow, I could. there's a way more efficient way I could have said that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just hard to shit on this mouse as a whole. It's easier to say this won't be for a lot of people than to say it's a bad product. There are a lot of issues, like I've mentioned, though, and another one is just the general quality of these side buttons, because like I mentioned before, my thumb is touching a lot of these buttons, so it does not help that there is side play and pre-travel on basically all of the side buttons, which just makes it so I'm like half pressing all of the buttons when I'm just like moving my thumb around. It does feel very weird and unnatural. So maybe this mouse is bad, dude. I don't even know. Um, it's kind of crazy. The shape I haven't talked about much yet. It's not an identical clone of either the G502 or the Basilisk. Seems that I've lost my G502, which is just an utter shame. But let's be real, it is clear where the Model I gets its shape inspiration from. Uh, but yeah, it definitely doesn't feel identical in hand. It is a very large and wide mouse. And as you can see, the right side of it is very flat. There's not much curve to it. Um, compared to something like the Basilisk, I would definitely only recommend the Model I to claw grippers with large hands or people who play palm grip um, with like medium to large hands. That's what the box says, and I think it's pretty accurate, honestly, because if your hands are too small, you're going to have tons of issues. Um, one, you might have a harder time reaching the scroll wheel because this mouse is really long. What did it say? Like, what's the measurement? 128 millimeters? Um, yeah, wait, I'll show the dimensions. As you can see, they have a lot of dimensions listed. Um, all that's really telling you is it is wide, long, and tall. So if you have small hands, I would 100% stay away. Like I said, you might have trouble reaching the scroll wheel. And another thing I haven't even mentioned yet, um, if you have like just smaller hands, you're probably going to have a much worse experience with the clicks because they are going to feel a lot heavier the farther down on the click you go. Um, if you have like large hands and claw grip, you'll probably be fine. For me, the clicks are still definitely the heaviest out of any Glorious mouse. They're using the same Glorious Kill 8.0 switches, but due to the implementation, they just feel heavier this time around than they did on the Model D-, the Model O-, all of the past Glorious mice. So the clicks are sort of heavy, so beware of that as well. I can't say I had a problem spamming these in something like Fortnite for editing or any click timing scenarios in Kovacs, but if you are coming from something like a G502 with the Logitech Omrons, or a Razer Basilisk, it will be a much different experience. Not saying you can't get used to it, um, but you know, that's just how it is. The scroll wheel is the exact same as before. There's no added scroll wheel functions. You can't even like click it from side to side. So it's sort of disappointing to see on the mouse, they like go all out on features. They don't really do anything with the wheel when they easily could, but I guess they are uh, saving weight. They added two DPI buttons. I don't really see a point of this. For some reason, I was accidentally hitting it um, occasionally when I was like sm smacking the scroll wheel, but I don't know. I could probably just disable them and my issue would go away, but that was worth noting. And the G-Skates, um, they have a lot of them and they feel good, honestly. Like once I broke them in, they just perform well on every pad. I was using them on glass pads as well and they were just performing well. Really good stock skates. I don't think they've changed much. Um, but yeah, I was just satisfied with the experience. The 3370 BAMF sensor, 
uh, performed perfectly well. I turned the click debounce to 0 MS, and they were fine as well. Um, so performance of this mouse was good. It's still not something I'm going to generally recommend to most people for FPS. Definitely no seal of approval. And as far as my personal experience with this mouse, I just found it to be kind of meh. Um, it's a typical glorious mouse. They take a pre-existing mouse and then just make a lightweight sort of clone version of it and they just run the budget market. So if that is what you are looking for, want to try out the uh, multiple button, awesome non cram design for yourself, then give it a shot. Uh, but for me, this is something I won't be coming back to and I just found it to be sort of a meme. I would go with a G502 Lightspeed if you are looking for the most premium version of this type of mouse. I'll make a comparison video once I find my G502 Lightspeed. Um, but that's going to be about all for the review of the Glorious Model I. By the way, if you play whatever a MMO or a MOBA is, um, I, you shouldn't be watching my videos. I only make mouse reviews. Um, pertaining to FPS gaming. So whenever I get people who are like, what about what about blank game? I'm like, dude, I don't even know this game exists. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and just uh, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below, whatever. Let me know your thoughts for the algorithm. Peace.